and you came to our little vineyard church that uh, that we attended, and you were like a guest speaker, and I couldn't stand you. And I realized he's grabbing my head and he screams in my face, "Are you ready? Ready for what? What are you talking about?" Interesting. It was um, it was the most powerful thing I've ever experienced in my life. Wow, man. Welcome to Radical Radio with Robbie Dawkins. Robbie is a renowned speaker and equipper in over 70 countries, as well as author of international best-selling book, Do What Jesus Did. Here's your host, Robbie Dawkins. Hey, welcome to Radical Radio. I'm your host, Robbie Dawkins. And man, I tell you what, before anything, do me a favor. Uh, we have a, a link below if you're watching this. Uh, our website, uh, click on that if you will, and hit partner. Uh, if you want to help us continue with these programs, uh, we're only able to stay on by your support. And then also uh, make sure and hit like and share. Uh, one of the things we hear regularly here on Radical Radio is how much a difference these podcasts and vodcasts have made for people's lives and the impact they've had. And so we want to make sure and keep that going forward and keep that going elsewhere. Well, I'm really excited today because uh, a very dear friend of mine is on with me. And uh, I, I, I know I always say I'm excited when I host the shows. This one I'm probably more excited about than any of the others. And it's just because of the long-term relationship with this guy. But we have the Darren Wilson uh, who, if you've seen any of his documentaries, you know very much uh, why he's, uh, sig- I believe, the most significant filmmaker in the Christian world today. And I think even Charisma Magazine has dubbed you as that. There's been a, another another Christian periodical I saw. Somebody sent it to me that it dubbed you as probably most the, the most significant uh you know, films that are being released because they're not just entertainment films. They yeah. truly are encounter films, really. Yeah. And so uh, I'm glad to have you, man. I'm Thanks glad to for be saying here. yes. Thanks for coming and joining us. It's always fun. And of course, the first thing I just got to say, just out of the gate, you know, <clears throat> you have so many people as subjects in your films, mm-hmm. but there's one that stands out. <laughs> and of course, um, just want to ask you the question, who's the most anointed of all of your subjects mm. in your films, the most anointed? That's easy. Okay. Bill Johnson. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go I to can the give secondary you, I can, tier. I can give you the least anointed. Let's skip that. Okay. Okay. Just checking. And let's go to the personality of course you love hanging out with the most out of all of your subjects there's one guy that stands hmm. out hmm. and that would be bill johnson okay let's go <laughs> to the best looking most attractive of all your subjects yeah oh bill johnson <sighs> yeah all right no. forget it Let's move on to the other questions. I mean, you're <laughs> you're you're decent in all of those, of those things. I was like, yeah, if we don't have a slot, uh, <laughs> let's throw Robbie in. <laughs> no, you're great, man. Like no. I said, you and Bill, you're you're the only ones who have been in every single one of my films. And wow, there's, you know, there's there's a reason for that. That is there that uh, that is honestly a big honor uh, to to <laughs> to have that and be equated to that. How do, how do you select people? Um, most of the time, so I have a, a couple of, of rules. So yep. if you solicit me, I will never film you. Interesting. Um, because I just don't know what your motives are. Yeah. You know, like I get it all the time. Like, hey, the, we're doing this ministry. We're doing this really cool stuff. You might want to check it out. Mm-mm. You know, yeah. I, I'm way more interested in the people who, when I ask them and they know they know of the movies, then they know what they can do for like their ministry or whatever, and they say they say no, and I have to like talk them into it. Wow, you know, like Mike and Dina in China, they were they were incredible. I, I had people. to like, I mean, I had to bring other people in to try to talk them into into doing it, uh, and they were big fans of the films. But yeah, they were just, yeah, they were just yeah. like, you know, we they're just so humble. And, these uh, these guys, they have this orphanage basically yeah. in China. That's just, I mean, man, they are. I get chills when I think of him, honestly, because, yeah, you know, people. just I think he was in banking or something like that. And then he turns around yep. and 
got right ditches the career yeah. and and goes you know as a missionary working with orphan show i mean they just man every time i see that piece of them in the movie and, yeah. and then they've been in some of your television stuff too mm -hmm. it just uh man they touch my heart so much so that's that's the thing if somebody solicits so they, like, just, they solicit me i'm gonna say no um and then so usually for you've me you've got to have, have had a lot of that though yeah yeah a lot of people have been having to go, hey, how about this? Yeah, about oh, yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've got trust issues because of it. You know, it's, it's kind of thing. <laughs> no, but, um, but honestly, how it works for me is um, it's usually through other people that I, that I really, really trust will tell yeah, me. Yeah. You know, um, probably the biggest one is Will Hart. Um, yeah. Well, and he, he Will's always, so connected to, he so always, many yeah, he's, ministry and things. if he says these people are legit. That I don't even need to check on them. Yeah. I know I'm going to go. but And then it's just, you know, as I meet people, I become friends with them. I like yeah. to do stuff with my friends. So yeah. um, that's kind of how it works. And with, uh, you know, with Will, just uh, just to get, just give that plug, he's, he's over Iris uh, Ministries mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S., Heidi Baker, yeah. Heidi and Roland Baker, Baker's Ministry, and uh, an incredible guy. Yeah I, yeah, I would trust Will when it comes to that because he sees so much and is around so much. So if if you're getting so so it's more through the recommendations and and more through, um, so so you're just relying on the Holy Spirit to do I do this? Do yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And then you know I'll film with because a lot of people keep showing up in the in you know they'll be, pop up in like the next films and stuff, and then some people don't. And there's always there's there's usually a reason. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you yeah. kind of get the vibe of people and and uh, just what they're about and stuff like that. And so it's kind of like you know. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very much just, I kind of just go with, with, with who the Lord kind of brings in front of me. So you, you, you just sort of alluded, or you said, you know, there's a reason for that. Uh, is there, what, what is that? <laughs> you said there's a reason why you're, why you're in it. I mean, and I'm curious, I'm oh, seriously why curious. Why you, why you are in it? Yeah. You said there's a, you said you're one of a few people. Yeah. I, well, because one, I know that, uh, I can trust you that, mm. that you're not going to flame out. Cause that, that, you know, and that's, that's happened quite a few times with sure. different people that, you know, that we we're mutually friends yeah, with. Yeah. 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 Um, but also like, like you're one of my best friends. And yeah. so, you know, it's just, and I just know that, you know, I think you said something to me once and that I, that really stuck with me. And then when I thought about it, I'm like, it's the same on my end too. Or I think you said you loved being a part of these films because, um, you know the the Holy Spirit's always always moves when you when you pray for people, but like you you said, there's like an almost like an extra juice yes. on the Spirit when when we're going out and we're we're doing these films, and uh, you know, and I see that too. It's just like every time we go to do something, like it's always like your money in the bank in a sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like so yeah, it's kind of the friendship thing, but also I feel like there's just something on just when you and I kind of get together for these films that just. Spe cool. Speaking for the heart, and it's really funny because our relationship is we are very brotherly, so we're yeah. always razzing each other yeah. and messing with each other like constantly, mm -hmm. which is very much for both of us fun banter. Yeah. We enjoy it. It's not like if people probably saw it, they're like, "What's the matter with you?" <laughs> yeah, but right. we actually really love it, and it's our love language. Yeah, it's a weird sort of twisted love language, <laughs> but yet it still is a love language. But one of the things that's it's interesting with me. So that you bring that up because I mean, I would have said that like probably a really long time ago, yet I still feel that mm -hmm. it's almost like you have, if you will, for people who understand this language, which I think most of our audience does, it's almost like you have two anointings working mm -hmm. simultaneously and they're, they're sort of working almost like gears. Yeah. You know, uh, you have some people that you work with ministry wise where it, the gears aren't really yeah, yeah. sinking but it feels like this, you know, yeah. in, in that, in that type of setting. And, um, and I remember, and this is, uh, I'm going to bring something out that, that you, you, I don't know if you remember it or not. I think you do, but we were filming in Greece and, um, and it was actually Brian Schwartz, who was the guy that I was yeah. paired up with on that, yeah. who said, uh, who he told me later, you didn't even tell me this, hmm. or I don't think you did. Uh, but Brian Schwartz told me later how that uh, we were heading to Delphi mm -hmm. and um, we get there and uh, we were kind of like, there was like no tourists there. Right. Yeah. It was just really us. All by ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We're on top of this mountain, these ruins that were amazing ruins, yeah. you know, 
but we're, you know, and, and if anybody doesn't know what the Oracle of Delphi was supposed to be, mm-hmm. it's this woman who's, who gets these visions and gets these things from God. Well, it turns out that there's a lot of natural <laughs> gas, gas there. Gas pocket, so it was yeah. actually like hallucinations right. and, you know, probably even demons jumping on mm-hmm. those hallucinations and stuff like that. But, uh, but there was, there was like nobody there. So we got these ama- amazing scenic sort mm-hmm. of shots and things like that that were beautiful. Yeah. Um, I remember one where this cloud, the cloud just came, came. Yep. Oh man. And it, it felt very much divine. Yeah. And my, it, my feeling was, is that it was like God's presence hitting the place. And then right after that, if I remember sequentially how it happened, this tour bus pulls mm-hmm. up and this woman with sort of strawberry blonde hair steps off. And as soon as I saw her, I was like, I got a word for her. Yeah. Now how it works for me is I don't know what that is right. until I approach them. And I went up and I approached and I said to her, I said, hey, I said, and she had just made this comment. She goes, well, we know prophecy isn't real, that people really don't communicate with the gods. And she was saying gods is sort of old God type of thing. And she was saying, so we know it's not real. And I said, you know, I noticed you just said that. She was letting everybody walk around so she was by herself. And I approached her and I said, I noticed you said that. I said, can I prove to you it actually is real? Mm Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, how would you do that? And I said, well, I said, you actually are having some struggle in relationships and having some things that are going on. And I normally don't remember prophetic mm-hmm. words afterwards, but for this one, for some reason, it, it stuck with me. Yep. And I said, and you're having some problems and no relationship works. It doesn't. And I said, and it all stems back to a relationship with your mother. Yep. My and she's is, like, yeah. nah. well, you had said before we got there, we stopped there for a bathroom yeah. break. And you had said to Brian, uh, you guys were off alone or something, or you pulled off to yeah. get a drink or something. And you had said to Brian, at least this is how he related it to me. He goes, and this was after the the fact. He said, he said, did you hear? Did Brian? He said, did Darren tell you mm-hmm. uh, the the what the Lord yeah, showed him coming that. up here? And I said, I said no. And he goes. No, the Lord showed him that we were going to find a woman that with like strawberry blonde hair Mm -hmm. that had mommy issues. Had mommy issues, I remember. Yeah. (laughs) It was so crazy. And so. And that was weird because that's not, I mean, you know me. I don't really, that doesn't happen to me very often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. Well, you do get it, but. Yeah, it's just not like an everyday. Maybe not prolifically, but yeah. yeah. But um, for me, that was, I was, a lot of times stuff like that for me comes when I'm in that kind of in between sleep and awake. It, mm, that's yeah. when I get like kind of like actual if I ever call them a vision it's usually that and I remember it was a four hour car ride to get there yeah it was, it was a long and so I remember I was sleeping and I kind of as because it was coming out I just had this this yeah this vision of this lady with mommy issues so I just told I told Brian at the at the rest stop it was so it was, it was cool. so intriguing and and it was interesting because we had just been before that at the um at the the big uh, the Parthenon yeah thing. yeah the yeah. Parthenon and and Brian was blowing it up. Yeah, yeah. Like he was praying for people. He, I was trying to have this in, interesting dialogue with yeah. this woman, but he was just on fire. Yeah. And so, uh, but it was um, it was so cool because I remember when he said that, I was like, "What, really?" <laughs> and then I, I I thought, well, maybe he's just saying this to make me feel good or something like that. Yeah. And then you, I asked you, and you were like, "Oh no, 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 that's exactly what I what I said to him yeah. uh, in the bathroom or something as we were coming up." Yep. And it was the craziest well. thing, but it just has this feeling of God really cooperating, mm-hmm. you know, along the way. So, you know, part of what, you know, of course I know the answer to this, but you know, people are going to say, how did you meet? How did you two guys meet? So talk about that. Okay. Talk so about the first <clears throat> we're going in the way back machine now. <laughs> um, I don't even know what you're, well, no, because I was working on finger of God. So it would have been 2006 ish around then. Uh, so at the time, I was a college professor uh, in Chicago um, at Judson University, and um, I was making, I was, I was kind of filming in the process of filming uh, Finger of God. I didn't, don't think I even knew at the time that it was a feature film yet. I thought it was. I was started out making a short film, and then it just blew, blew into something bigger. And you came to our little vineyard church that uh, that we attended. And you were like a guest speaker, and I couldn't stand you <laughs> as a speaker. I remember. Now you have to understand. I was in a dark place, um, you know, while I was, especially bef- right before I started making finger. But even in the middle of it, I was still trying to figure all this charismatic stuff out. Yeah, 
I mean, I was an academic, right? And so it's like, it's none You've of this. You've grown up in a Baptist church. Yeah. And that, that just, none of it makes, made sense to me. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you'd come in when you had all these stories and, you know, and <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I believe this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, you look like a biker and it was just, I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was just one of those things where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I like this guy, but then at the end, because you're you, you're like, you know, if you, anybody wants, you know, prophetic word or want me to pray for you, whatever, come on, you know? And I remember um, my wife pushed me to the front. Like she's like, Oh, and I, honestly, like that was the one thing, even when I was like, not really into this stuff, the prophetic was always something that intrigued me mm, um, because it was, it was something that I could, that was verify, ver, verifiable, yeah, yeah. verifiable. It's because, either right or not. Yeah. It's like, I mean, you're going to tell me something and it's either going to be right or, or wrong. And and I believed in God and I believe that God still, still, you know, spoke. And that's, but I remember I went forward and you prayed for me and uh, you gave me a very specific, weird word. You didn't know who I was you know, like, like at all. Yeah. 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 Um, or what I was doing or anything like that. I just guessed you to be some book nerd dude. <laughs> <laughs> which I was, uh, still am, but, uh, no. So you, you said, you know, I see, I see you like, it's almost like you're forming clay figures and, yeah. and like you're, 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 um, you know, placing them on a board and you're, you're messing with them and you're kind of like, you're creating almost like a scene with these clay figures. And, um, God is going to, um, basically like make, make those figures come to life and, and they'll, they'll, they'll touch people. And I was in the middle. I, I was in the middle of like literally like that's that's what editing is. That's what like making mm, a movie basically yeah. is. And the fact that my dad is a potter. You, you know, you didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. And so I you're dealing with like clay. Yeah, I would have, but they had. I would have known Gary at that time to know that. Yeah. Anyway, was that so bizarre? So yeah. So at that after that, I was like, okay, maybe this guy is legit. You know, <laughs> I'll give him another chance. Give him a little, little in. So I think I think that's. What, I don't know when I asked you to to do an interview, but it was. Probably it was after that. I was you like, know, okay, I, I think, think the first thing, the first thing I remember you asking me, and I think it was my second time there. I think I went several, mm -hmm. I, know, I know I went spoke several times at, at the church you were attending, but I think it was the second time you asked me, would I be interested in coming and speaking at a chapel, which I think they shut down pretty quickly. And we're like, and eh, nah, <laughs> no, let's not do that or something. I don't remember the circumstances, of it, but I remember you mentioning that if, if it was possible or mm. if it was, you know, and I was like, yeah, especially at that university, yeah. I'd love to, you know? Well, um, I remember, I don't know if you remember this, but when the movie was released, yes, no, you came in that. Yeah. and uh, that caused a little bit of uproar. <laughs> that was, uh, I, I, I got, that got me in a little bit I of gotta trouble. I got to talk about that because yeah, I, I, I remember that night well. Yeah. And w one of the things that I remember was when you introduced me, you didn't say my name. You said, there's a bald guy that some of you may think is weird. Did I but really? Some of you, yeah, I you just that. said, and you didn't say my name. You didn't say the name of my church or anything like that, which if like literally for me, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I, some people would really care and go, well, let me just say who I am. Yeah. You know? Like, and it was almost like I could feel the Lord going, that's how I want this to go. Hmm. Like, I don't want people, like, I don't want this to be about personalities or about like this is because your whole point is to demonstrate God, yeah. you know, in the, in the film. And it, and I remember going, yeah, this is actually perfect. Yeah. But I remember at first I was like, oh, do I have to say where I'm from? Do I have to? Because yeah. I was so, I remember just bursting it was a theater, right? It was, a, it was a theater like on a, campus, yeah. A, like a couple hundred seat yeah, theater. Yeah, it was a theater on campus. I remember, I remember just going, man, this is, I, I was just excited to be there yeah. for one thing. And then, and I, because I had previewed the movie at the church, you had shown it at your church before. And so I had seen it there and was so stinking excited when I got to finally see it, mm -hmm. you know? And then, and then when we were there, I remember somebody I said, well, I invited the Holy Spirit to come in, come Holy Spirit. And I heard, boom. And I looked and mm -hmm. somebody hit the wall and was sliding down the wall to the right side. And then I heard somebody go, ah, and they start manifesting a <laughs> yeah. demon on the other side. And this, the whole room just, you know, just started. I mean, it started off for me, it's always, it's always kind of sort of how, 
John Wimber used to see this. It would it sort of be it sort of ease into it, but then once it got sort of turned up, it was like yeah. And, and I remember I think like seven kids got like gold dust on them. Yes, of, of these students of mine, and I think that's when the the provost walked out. <laughs> <laughs> But I remember sitting there looking at that room going, wow, this is this is so incredible. And I, and I remember going, it, that's when, for me, I, I definitely, when I, when I got to see it for the first time, I remember going, uh, man, this is going to be huge. And then, this, and then the second time in the theater, I was going to go, I was, I was sitting there saying, this is going to make a massive impact. Mm. Like, it's just, just, and, you know, doing a ministry time after that movie was just so easy yeah. because the, <laughs> it, clearly the Holy Spirit's right. there. He's already working on everybody and you're just going, take us deeper. Yeah. You know, there's, there's not much, you're not really bringing much to the table. Yeah. You're just riding the wave of what Holy Spirit's <laughs> already doing, you know, in the midst of it. And so it was, it was clearly that, but that was, that was incredible. And I remember, and the, the movie, how far did it go? Like how, what was, uh, I mean, I know the answer, but I, I mean, I don't even, really at this point it. we, we can't even track it. I mean, it's been millions upon millions, upon millions, millions of upon people. millions of people all yeah. over the world. Yeah. Everywhere I go. Yeah. Everywhere I go, people are like, Hey, wait, you, you know, and, Which and they are, yeah. and the majority of the time they're referencing you know, yeah, I talked to so many people when they're like, the only one that they've seen in my movies is Finger of God. And I'm like, oh, there's so much. There's, the, there's, the other ones are so much better. <laughs> because there's, you're you're growing not oh, just in man, your yeah. in your in 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 your following what the Holy Spirit's doing. You're growing, growing my in craft. Your craft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so um, and I, I I'm 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 talking about all that to lead up to the fact that um that there's a new movie coming out. Yeah. And it's the God Man. Yes. And uh, for everybody, June six, it's coming out in theaters. June six and June sixth only. June yes, June six only. Everybody's got you, the, part of the reason why you have to share this program is that the word needs to get out about this immediately, mm -hmm. and people need to see this. They need to share it and get people in those theaters. I'm telling you, I have seen, of course, every one of the films being a part of them. However. When I saw this one, it was it, it just it was it was different. Yeah, it was it, the, the power of it. All of them, all of them have been powerful. Yeah, none like this though. No, there's something on this one that's and different. it's so because who's the focus? Mm -hmm. It's yeah, and oh. that was in, that was in, that was very intentional from the very beginning. I think I even talked to you about it because yeah, you were part you of the very first shoot in Alaska with us. And I, I was still kind of working out what this thing was going to be, right? Well, we had talked about it seven years before. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there have been a lot of starts and stops for this one. But but yeah, for this one, it was always, because it was Jesus, the focus was Jesus. I'm like, I cannot screw this one up. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. With Holy, the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost Reborn, it, that was such an experiment. Yeah. That I, you know, I was just, it, it, that was the hardest move I've ever had to make because it was so stressful. But like. Interesting. It was just, I kind of was, I wasn't in charge of that one. In, yeah, in yeah, a yeah. sense, I'm not in charge of any of them, really. But like, you know, this one had much more. I had I had a clearer focus going into this one than I, than any of the other ones. Um, and so, you know, and but, that one with Holy Ghost. That's when we were in Greece and yeah. in Rome and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's that's where that was taking place. Yeah. So that morning. one was kind of out of my hands, and so I just let it go wherever it was going to go. And you know, and yeah. And so, but with this one, it was like, man, I. I I just, I cannot screw up Jesus. Like I just can't yeah. do you know what I mean. Like I can't let this thing go off the rails. I can't let, and for me, the way that the, the only way I could do that was really controlling who I filmed with. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and so I said, I remember talking to you and some of the other guys, it's like, I, this one, I just want to make with my, with my good friends, mm, yeah. you know, the people that I've done, I've been doing life, life with, with, yeah. As opposed to just poaching, you know, like cool ministers or big personalities or something like that. Yeah. Which is fine for for some things, but um, yeah, with this one, it was just very. I just wanted to be very, very, very pure, and yeah. just like in you know, no, no hype, no. We're not focusing on you. We're not focusing on your right. ministry. We're just focusing on Jesus. And even when we went to Alaska, remember the whole goal was not to you know, we had thought about, we had talked about doing like a big event because they had like the bike, yep. the bikers were going to be in town and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and it just kind of like all all kind of fell apart. And I, I realized, you know, kind of towards the end, like I think we're just supposed to go and just 
hang out with people for a week. Yeah. And let's just become friends with people and see where it goes. Yeah. Which to me is ultimately, that's kind of what the, the best way to, to, to do the gospel anyway is, yeah. is through right. relationship with right. people. It's one-on-one. It's, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's a, it was definitely a focus early on to get this thing, you know, to have it be as pure as possible. And it's certainly, I mean, it, that certainly comes through and everybody who sees it, it you're going to, you're going to get that. And this is, this is a film too, especially to bring unbelievers to, yeah. um, because it's, it uh, it's, it's a journey of somebody really close to you <laughs> yes. who's like, yes. wh- who, you know, you ticked all the boxes in influencing their early life yep. to have this propensity towards God and yep. a relationship with God. But do you mind talking about that? No, a yeah. Bit? So, so a, a big focus of this film is actually my daughter, Serenity. Yeah. And um, she, when I started, who I just love, by the way, she's she's, just, the, she's the best. She's the bomb. But um, so when I started basically filming this thing, she had gone very prodigal, um, very prodigal. And, you know, yeah. we just didn't know what to do. I don't like, how do we get this kid back kind of thing? You know, she, I mean, she was, she grew up in the church. She had her, she had her own personal experiences. Yeah. But, you know, she had been like so many people just really hurt by the church, by mm-hmm. church leadership, judgment. You know, I mean, she basically kind of got kicked out of youth group because yeah. she was, you know, she's, she's a kid and she's experimenting with stupid things. And the last thing you should do as a leader is like, you, you get out, you're poisoning the flock or something like that. That's kind of how it was, it came across. So she was just like, I don't want to be a part of this. Like, yeah, these people are all hypocrites anyway. I know what their kids are doing, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, so she just really, really fell away. And so I just, I was like, was last ditch effort, I just hired her to be a part of the movie. Cause I know what the movies did for me. Yeah. You know, when I first started, I was kind of, I wasn't where she was at, you know, with like drugs and all that kind of stuff. But I, when I first started Finger of God, I mean, I was barely holding on to my faith, like yeah, yeah, barely yeah. by a thread. I believe I, I was always going to believe, but I didn't. I was just like, I just thought this: if this is it, like this kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this faith sucks. If this, if it's just about like let's just suffer for Christ and and you know let's just go to church and try to be a good person, like that's okay. You know? Yeah. Like, whoopee. And then church is boring, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and then they have guest speakers that I don't like, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. But um, <laughs> that you oddly enough become really good friends with. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so for me, but I saw what the movies did, making them did to me. Yeah. You know, they radically transformed me. Yeah. And I was just hoping, I'm like, I just want her to see God again, mm. to see him move, to hang out with people who are cool, you know what I mean? Mm. Who are like, like well, sort of you, um, more J- more Jake, Jake Hamilton, the cool. He's the cool one of us. But you know what I mean. Like let's Absolutely. hang out with normal people who love God. Yeah. But you know, can have a good laugh and you know what I mean. Yeah. Anytime my sons have struggled, I've like wanted to. Yeah. Hey, I'm doing this event with this person. Get around them. Hopefully they'll impact yeah. you. And but yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah. So I, and the, so basically, what happened is just through the sheer the making of the movie and seeing what we did and seeing what God did. I mean, she got radically, radically saved through the process. And I mean, you know her now. She's on fire. Oh, my goodness. Fire. Yes. Like on fire. She's teaching me stuff. Yeah. You know? So, she and my son go to school together, yeah. you know, at, at Bible college. And so, yeah, I I, I know. And and it, it's weird because that wasn't the plan. Mm-mm. Serenity wasn't a, wasn't a part mm. of the plan of it. But... Um, yeah, it it sort of was like, oh, wait a minute, there's a thread here. Yeah, you know, and it's and it's it is interesting because you 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 see several times, like I I think it was in the rough cut that that you first sent mm-hmm. me a, a rough cut. I think it was thirty five or forty minutes of it, mm-hmm. and there were several times I caught her expressions of like, like yeah. being in yeah. shock over something or like. Like wh- what? How did yeah. that happen? Like, yeah. like you could and and you could see. Oh wow, something's happening with her. Yeah, something's something's clicking. You know, and uh, that that use that aha moment of yeah. wait, this is God being very very real right now. Yeah. And so it 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 yeah. And then I mean you and and everybody who goes and sees a movie, do not leave as soon as the credits start to roll. Stay through. Just keep watching until. There's no more talking because you 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 just have to, 
And so, um, and, and especially if you bring people that are unbelievers, make sure yeah. and do that and make sure and, and follow through to the end. Um, you know, in, in this, I mean, it, there was, so, so, so you were seeing that in the making of it and mm-hmm. you're like, wait a minute, this is another layer to this film and a very important personal layer. Yeah. But it was clear. And, and at first, when honestly, I got to be honest, when you, when you, when we talked on the phone and you said, you know what, I'm actually, this was a, made a major difference in Serenity's life, my daughter's life. You know, this is my, and I'm actually, th- I was like, oh, Darren, don't do this. <laughs> like, this is a train wreck, dude. You're, you're going. And I've like literally never questioned any of your, mm-hmm. you know, sense or following because I know you hear from God. I yeah. know God speaks to you with it. And so I'd never, but I was like, oh, this is a, I think even to some of my staff, I was like, oh, he's talking about doing this. This is a mistake. And then when I saw it, Mm-hmm. I was like, I cannot imagine that film without yeah. that. Now, at the same time, dude, you're showing some brutal stuff of your daughter. Yeah. Two parts. Mm-hmm. How does that feel showing it to the world? And then how does it feel like you're it, you're heavily involved in the editing process? Of this. I do the, all the editing, yeah. I know. Yeah. How? How do you do? How so, does that feel? Well, what what's interesting you? about the, about serenity's part in it is the original cut where i thought the movie was done she wasn't in it at all yeah um and then stuff i saw it was just little blips yeah i mean she she wasn't but like her story she didn't i didn't right never done didn't do an interview with her or anything and so i showed it to to like like just my immediate family and um you know janelle her mom was Mm -hmm. like this movie's incredible but you you've missed yeah like the most important story i'm like what are you talking about She's like, your daughter, like your daughter was literally radically transformed by yeah. just being yeah, a yeah. part of it. And as soon as she said that, I was just like, oh my gosh, how, one, how did I miss it? Yeah. Two, like that is, it was just like, there's like, it was almost like there's this missing piece that I didn't even know was missing as soon, but like, as soon as it was brought before me, I'm like, that's it. That yeah. is it. I have to do that. And so, yeah, we just did a quick, um, an interview with her. And I mean, kudos to her. She's just opened up. I mean, she's got, when you're that radically saved, yeah. like you just don't have anything to hide anymore. Yeah. It's like, look, Let it this out. is who I was. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and she's the one, she's, you know, all the stuff of her doing drugs that's in the movie. It's like, she gave all that to me, you know, and. Yeah. Cause it's her on her phone. Yeah. It's her on her phone. Just, you know. And it's like. Smoking oh. weed. And yeah. So it's like. I've so, noticed that she's a little girl. And so it was like, I'm sitting there getting wrecked <laughs> watching this going, no, no, not little serenity. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, like it wasn't hard for me at that point just because I knew who she was now. So it was almost like I was editing a different, I was yeah, a yeah, different yeah. person. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it almost wasn't my daughter because it's not who she is anymore. Right. So it was like a, you're editing a dead person kind of thing. Mm, and so wow. it doesn't, it doesn't really affect me that much when I see Interesting. it, Interesting. Yeah. what affects me is seeing her like, like the ending. I cry every time I, I've course. seen this movie 50 you times. Can't, you can't not. I cry every single time, you know, because the ending really is about her. And that's what gets me. Yeah. What gets me is the transformation and what God did to her and how yes. faithful he was. And, you know, we've, we've shown this movie a, a, f- a few different places around the country just to get a sense at, at some churches, a sense of what, what we've got. And I mean, every single person who sees it says Serenity is the literally is the heart and soul of the movie. Oh, and, so um, powerful! And the, and but I have talked to so many mothers who would come up to me after these showings, and they're like, for the first time in twenty years, I have hope for my yeah. for my my kid. You know? Yeah, yeah. And like, so many kids have walked away. You know, and and that's all the same. It's the same story over and over and over again. Like, they just get hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the power the the power struggles and the just the judge the judgment like it's just oh it's so stupid man like just love can we just love these kids as they're yeah they're trying to figure it out man you know and yeah and we just we get so scared and we want to control them we want to control their behavior uh, because it makes us feel better yeah Um, and i'm just like you know i just keep reminding people especially if you've got a prodigal kid like you just got to let them go on their journey you know, mm-hmm. and it's hard because it's your child and you don't want them to go through the pain. Sure. But at the same time, I, I always remind, I have to remind myself, like, I'm on a journey too. I'm on my own journey. Yeah. And I've been through a journey. And I'm like, think of all the cr- 
the crazy stuff that, you know, that you did when you were younger and like just the, the, the lessons, the hard lessons that you had to learn that made you into who you are today. The same thing is true with our kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's just, you, you just never stop praying for them because God's always going to be faithful. And this, the, the assignment of these movies came to you out of an encounter. Yeah. And out of like, I, I kept thinking of that when I was watching your daughter's part mm. in the film. I kept thinking of the story of you in Toronto. And yeah. when this, I was like, oh, wow, this was like in, in a, you hadn't gone, you weren't down the road. She had gone down, but you were in that, in that place of being away. Yeah. Um, and, and I know you've written books about it. You wrote the book, Filming God. You had, uh, list your books for us. Filming God. Well, the, the three that matter, uh, Filming God is my first one, which is kind of the, the behind the scenes story of how this all came about and filming the first two movies. Uh, and then, um, Finding God in the Bible. Uh, yes. Oh, so good. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, the, the newest one that's out right now, um, is called, uh, chasing a God you don't want to catch. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that's, title. that's probably my favorite of anything that I've created period. That's probably my favorite thing that, yeah. I've, that I've made. So yeah. is that book? It's, it, it, I've, I've got to read that one. I've read the other two, but I got to read that one. It, and, and in, in this, um, and, and where can people get those? Anywhere, anywhere yeah. books are sold. Anywhere yeah. books are sold. So, um, so with that, with that journey, with, with that, just hit on that, if you would, just yeah, tell so, what I mean, happened. So I was in a, like I said. Because you're not a filmmaker to start with. No, I was an English, you are now. I was an English professor. Yeah. I was a writer. And a so. Book nerd. I was a book nerd. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Proud of it. So yeah, I, I was. We get on planes together and he's got these big, thick books and I'm like. Well, now I got Kindles. So I, I got as many books. I mean, as I, I got want an with iPad me. with movies, and I'm like, <laughs> "Wow, go ahead and read away there." <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, so I yeah, I was in a just a kind of a spiritual wasteland is the best way I can describe it. Um, just dry as dry as could be, and you know, my aunt and uncle, my my family discovered this thing that was happening in Toronto. My aunt and uncle were about. I mean, they were like. Uh, their marriage was absolutely falling apart mm. and they tried everything. Nothing was working. Um, and so they basically like, they heard God was moving in this church in Toronto. So they hopped on a plane, went there, walked in normal people, walked out. Both of them got gold teeth at the service, wow. right? Just like miraculous gold teeth. And it became, it's a long story, but it became kind of the, the single event that, that ultimately led to the total restoration of their marriage. Mm. Um, and so, but, but I, I, I remember like my family was going to these conferences like every two months, it seemed like, and like they'd come back and all these stories, people being raised from the dead, yeah, limbs growing out. I'm like, I don't believe any of this stuff. Right. So if, it, if it's coming from a stage, that person has like a re like they have a reason to not tell you the truth. Yeah. 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 Um, Hyped, yeah they want to hype it up. So yeah. I'm like, nah, that's not true. But my aunt and uncle, I couldn't deny it. Yeah. Because I I've known him my entire life, yeah. You know, Uncle Bob, and, Uncle Bob and Aunt Patsy, man. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> sweetest people, love them. You know, my aunt was just stay at home mom her whole life, and Bob was a superintendent of schools in Minnesota. Like, yeah, I'm like these guys, they're not out for a ministry to try to make money. Yeah. You know, and so it really it intrigued me, and it but it also scared me, and so that was for me my biggest hang up was a, was a fear that this mm -hmm. was actually all true. And so that's kind of, you know, that I was very, there's a lot of trepidation when I started making Finger of God because, you know, I mean, I was, I was definitely a skeptic, um, but I also, I didn't want it to be true because if it was yeah. true, then I had to, You're I had responsible to, I had to make a decision, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's like, I liked my plausible deniability, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, so, but, but yeah, so I, but. I had this encounter, uh, you know, I, I, I got dragged to the, to a conference and uh, hated every minute of it. Um, <laughs> but the Lord, I remember I had had, I had had like a writer's block. Um, I'll, give, I'll just give the story. Please. I, I had had writer's block for the first time in my life for months. And I had no ideas. I was just ran, totally ran out of creative ideas, which for me is not, that's never, never. Yeah, happened. Right. And uh, so I remember um, uh, my wife was like, well, why don't you ask God for an idea? Because she was going to these conferences and hearing people who hear from God. And I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm like, that's what uncreative people do. Right? <laughs> God, God gave me an idea. But I remember I was so desperate. I was just, I remember I went to bed and I was just like, well, God, if, if you have an idea, I mean, I guess I'll take it. That was literally my prayer. Wow. 
And uh, five minutes later, I'm I'm literally in my underwear downstairs scribbling away on a on a pad with this idea that just literally exploded in my head. Mm. And uh, and so I knew it was from God. And God is so sneaky. He's so like he just knows you so well. He if he would have come to me and said, "I want you to make a feature film about all the miraculous things I'm doing around the world," I would have been like, "Yeah, right." Like you know, yeah. like there's no yeah, way I'm going to yeah. do a Christian movie, right? But instead, he gave me he's the the idea was make a short film about weird stuff that Christians believe. And I'm like, that I could do. Cause I think they're all weird. <laughs> they're all weird. Yeah. Especially and, these people, an endless cast, especially these people. people to choose from. Yeah. And I, but I had, I had, I had a miraculous story in my aunt and uncle. So I had, I had something to start with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I did. So I basically I was like, okay, well I know this is from God, but I don't, I'm not a filmmaker. I mean, I'm, I, mm. I teach English one oh one. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, so I was like, someday when I'm a successful writer, I'll, you know, I'll return to this and this will be my little, you know, my thing that I'll do for the Lord kind of thing. You know, like my tithe. Yeah, my, my tithe. Yeah, him, right. And so um, his kickback. So, yeah, so I just kind of put it on the shelf and walked away. Um, and so I went to this conference about, you know, a few months later and uh, they would have they'd have uh, ministry time at the end that were the, their ministry school students would come out and they'd prophesy over everybody. And, you know, I, I didn't like anything that was happening. I didn't like the laughing. I didn't like, I, I was judging yeah. everything. Um, but I was like, I, I was like, I'll go get, you know, I'll go get my, my fortune told. That's what, you know, that's, <laughs> that's how I viewed it. That's how I viewed the prophetic. Like, tell me my You're fortune. You're walking up. Here's my palm. Yeah. I was like, you know, and so I remember I'd go up and then I got prayed for six times over three days and every single person prayed the exact same prayer. Wow. They all said, there's something on the shelf. It's gathering dust. God wants you to take it down and run with it. And they all ended their prayer with, and you know what I'm talking about. Ooh. And I'm like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. But of course, you know, for me, I wasn't quite enough. I was a good evangelical boy. I need a little bit more confirmation. And so I, I remember it was the last night of the conference. Um, everybody was freaking out. I went, so I went to the back, which is where all good skeptics live. And <laughs> I just didn't want to be in the craziness. <clears throat> and I remember uh, the speaker was Bob Jones. <laughs> Comes up on stage during worship, interrupts worship and says, uh, this is exactly what came out of his mouth, by the way. Uh, I just want you all to know that an angel has entered the building and his name is Breakthrough. And he's come here from Nigeria where he's been for the last 10 years. And he's brought a whole bunch of his angel buddies with him. And they're going to be ministering to people whose hearts are turned to the Lord. So we're just going to let Breakthrough and his buddies do whatever they want to do and just keep on praising Jesus. Thank you very much. Wow. Click, walks off the stage. The place explodes, you know, and they're yeah. like, like, breakthrough drum solos like the whole the whole charismatic <laughs> yeah. just yeah scene and i'm in the back like this is why i hate this place <laughs> like it is just i'm like who is this guy yeah yeah like nobody's questioning how do you know an angel just in how do you know his name how do you know where he came from yeah. nobody's asking any of these questions which i which i have right sure nobody's vetting this guy they just they're just buying it hook line yeah. and sinker right and I was like, I, I just, God, whatever. And so I'm in the back. I close my eyes. I'm, I'm going to be the one person here who's, who's worship, who is going to worship God the correct way. Yeah. <laughs> like calm, chill. Trying to show all these nut jobs yeah, how to do like, it. No, it's, this is, <laughs> it should just be holy, right? Yeah. And so, uh, so I had my eyes closed and somebody really almost immediately walked past me. And I remember I had separated myself from everybody because I didn't, I didn't want anybody near me. But somebody walked by really close to me. And I was annoyed. Yeah. And I opened my eyes and there's nobody there. And so I close my eyes and then that's where basically my life changes forever. So yeah. there's a figure standing in front of me and I could only see him with my eyes closed. I could just see this like outline. Um, and I, I, I'm like, I don't, this is the, I, I, I knew what I was seeing, but more than that, I was feeling something. Yeah. And like, I've never felt anything in church mm. ever, 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 ever. But this was a presence and it was the most intense presence I've ever experience in my life it was just I, mean, I could i was i could see his whole body his hands were were clenched and his his whole body was vibrating with energy wow and i was like backing away like my back's against the wall and i'm just like what I'm, I, what is this thing right and and i remember thinking i had a very conscious thought i don't know what this is but i feel like it wants to break through a wall and as soon as i had the thought wow i was reminded of what that guy just said the name the name and I'm and I knew like I knew anything in the world 
that an angel named Breakthrough, the angel Breakthrough was standing in front of me. That you're just going, this is crazy. This is over. insane. And yeah. And boom, he's there. He's there. And this is real. This is like, I'm wow. like, and I remember like, this doesn't happen to like people like me. Yeah. This happens to people who want to come to these conferences, that, right. those type of people. Right. Right. And I'm just, I'm kind of freaking out because I don't know what to do. Right. I don't know angel etiquette. I don't know like how this, <laughs> I don't know how this, this whole thing works, man. <laughs> And I remember he spoke to me and it wasn't audible. It was just the only thing that I could hear, if that makes sense. Mm. And he said, are you ready? And I, I don't know what he's talking about, but I knew enough to know that if an angel asks you a question, you just say yes. So I said, yes. And he says, are you ready? Second time. I said, yes. The third time he, I see his hands go up and I realize he's grabbing my head and he screams in my face, are you ready? And I said, yes. This, the, the, the third time I spoke out loud, I said, yes. Ready for what? What are you talking about? Interesting. And he just smoldered at me for like five or 10 seconds. And then he just said, make that movie. Hmm. And he walked away. And I remember I, I said, wait, I just thought, wait. And instantly he was back in front of me. But this time the presence was totally different. It was the most tender, loving, just oozing. Love was just oozing off of him. And um, he said, what do you want? What do you need? I'll stay with you all night if you need me to. Wow. And I didn't need anything. I just, this was just like the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. And I just didn't want it to end. Yeah, yeah. And so we just stood there very awkwardly staring at each other. Mm. And uh, I finally was like, I don't know, am I supposed to release him? I'm like, well, I guess you can go now. And then he just, he, he went away. Mm. So I came out of this thing. I go upstairs to be by myself in like the balcony. And I just kind of plopped down on the floor and I just, I'm freaking out because I think I'm losing my mind, man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just said, Lord, what are you doing to me? What's going on? And instantly he gave me the first vision I ever had in my life. Uh, played like a movie screen in my, in my, right in front of me. And it was, uh, it's, it was basically the scene from, if you've seen the old movie, The Natural with Robert Redford, mm -hmm. it's a baseball movie. Mm -hmm. At the end of that movie, he's playing catch in a field of wheat with his son. And so that scene comes up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd been running from God because I was terrified of him for my whole life. And, you know, but my, one of my favorite memories as a kid is playing catch with my dad. That was like the height of like being a kid. <clears throat> and so this is what, you know, when God's going to reveal himself to me, this is what he, this is the, the picture he chooses. Like he just mm -hmm. knows you so well. Yeah. And all he said was, I get, I, it's 15, 20 years later, I get emotional. Of course. All he said was, do you want to play catch? <sighs> and he threw me the ball. And we sat there for 15 minutes Robbie, 15 minutes. We didn't, I didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. We just played catch, man. It was, um, it was the most powerful thing I've ever experienced in my life. Wow, man. And uh, so then. You've told me it before, but it <laughs> hits me every time. I'm like, wow. So I remember <laughs> it, that ends. And then I heard him say, stand up. Good grief. And I, so I stood up. He said, walk to the edge of the balcony. And I walked to the edge. He said, now look at them. All the people that I couldn't stand. These are all people, you know, I thought they're all nuts. And I looked down and he just put these new glasses on my eyes. And it, I just saw every, they're all doing their little dances and their hoo-hahs and their this and that. And, but what I'm seeing is he showed me what he sees. He saw hurt and pain and abuse oh, wow. and fear and doubt and just all the stuff that they're all struggling with. And then he, the last thing he said was, will you make it for them? Will you, will you make <sighs> the film to show my people how much I love them. Wow. And at that point I'm done. I'm like, God, I'll, I'll do anything. You yeah, just do. <laughs> like well, whatever. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, I, and, oh, and wow. yeah. So three weeks later, I was sitting in front of Bill Johnson. First interview of my entire life. Had to borrow equipment from my school. <laughs> uh, the whole movie cost $20,000 to make most, mostly bankrolled by my 94 year old Mennonite grandmother. Come on. Um, yeah. And it was just, it just turned into this behemoth, it, you know, it's like God's hand was on it from day one. <laughs> it's his idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it interesting how God's selection process yeah. of people who are like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Well, I, have I a, don't. Yeah. I have a funny story about that. I want to hear it. So <clears throat> when, when finger of God came out, it's becoming this, this mass, massive underground hit. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I start getting all these emails from, from people and they're all, I, I got at least 15 of them 
of people who are like, hey, I own a production company or, you know, I, I'm a director or whatever. And years ago, God gave me this idea to like make a film about miracles and what, what God's doing around the world. He's like, and then, and then they're all were like, and then I saw your movie and I realized like, that's the movie God asked me to make. But they all had said like, well, I don't have enough money. You know, I don't have enough time. You know, I don't, you know, whatever, whatever the excuse was. And they weren't angry. All the stuff you didn't have enough of yeah, also. Exactly. And so, but what was funny is, and they weren't like upset. They were just like, good, good for you. Like, good job doing yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I know for a fact that I was at best God's 16th choice to do this. So good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like everybody was saying no, and I'm the one idiot who said yes, you know, with who didn't even know how to work a camera. And it's like, he does, he's not looking for talent. He's looking for a yes. He'll take Come care on. of the rest, man. You know? Dude, you're saying something I preach all the time. I'm like, God's not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability because he there can give go. ability to anyone he chooses. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. You just, you just said yes. And, and, and of course he's, you know, I mean, I know professional movie makers have looked at it and said, Oh, I wish you would have done this. Wish you would have done that. Yeah. But yet they also finish what, cause I have some friends that are working in Hollywood and they're like, yet I wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. And they're just saying, because it's so raw and real and all of those things actually make it more real. Yeah. Like they've all said that to me, yeah, you know, when they see it. And, and, and I mean, these are guys who work for Sony yeah. like con or contract for Sony, you know, and stuff like that. But, uh, man, dude, that's he, every time you tell that story, which you've, you've told <laughs> to me a few times, it just, it wrecks me every time because it's just so, it's so personal. Yeah. And it's so intimate of God, but that's him. That's the God we know now. Yeah. And that was for me, why, why that was so important was it was the first time in my life that I fully understood that he doesn't want anything from me. He just wants me. Yeah. You know, cause I, I, I had always operated with the mindset of like, he just wants to take, 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 you know, he wants me to just get in line, be a good soldier, do what I tell you to do. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I, 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 like, he's like, I've got, I got things I need accomplished and I need you to do it to get what, what I want done. And so I just, I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't interested in the God like that. You know right. what I mean? It was just kind of like, it's a boss. Yeah. And, on, and, yeah. and that's kind of what, and that, I think that's why I'd kind of grown kind of really cold with Christianity. Cause it was like, it's just, you're serving a boss. Yeah. And there's no, there's no relationship with your boss. Right. You know? Yeah. And so it was like, but then when he showed me, he's like, no, 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 I'm your father. Yeah. Come on. Mm. That's a different, that's a different vibe. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. And, and so that and, really, and you've, you've, you just to say, you and Gary are super, your dad, yeah. you guys are super close. Yeah. I mean, he's a creative, you're a creative. He's a, he's a different personality, which probably makes two adds to the closeness, yeah. you know, cause he's, he's no, he great. Was, yeah, he I was love my best the friend. Guy. He was oh. my best friend growing up. There's, there, yeah, yeah. And, and even whenever I've been around you guys, you could see that. And there's just this, uh, he, he's amazing. Yeah. You know, Linda, he and Linda are just incredible people. And that, but, but just that, that showing that, intimacy that you know uh, uh of god and that man that just touches me and i gotta say i think that's what everybody feels in the movies hmm. uh is that there's this close proximity you do feel as you watch each and every one of them and again this one god man again coming out june 6th you've got to go to fandango or whatever your movie out <laughs> no there is fandango they do that if you go to, if you go to fathom events.com you, you go to search, that's the best you one. can search it and they'll they'll, they'll show you where it's I'll playing just, just you. tell you i pulled it up on fandango and it showed me everything in the dfw oh, okay, cool. area cool it showed me 25 theaters throughout the dfw area yeah. alone so i mean there's even more but i fathom would have way more of a list than that because only the fandango only publishes people they uh, for this isn't a plug for them but just <laughs> say that you know it's only the people that that have subscribed to to them to yeah. do that but you literally please get this word out because i mean it, it's it's an encounter it's an encounter for the believer and one of the things that hit me in this and, and I, i'm sure you probably covered it before but i didn't see it as much as i did in this one is hitting like especially with your daughter hitting on that uh, Jake Hamilton gets really mm -hmm. vulnerable about hurts and wounds yeah. he's had in the church. Several people start kind of hitting 
on that. Even the guys that are in Brazil talking yeah. about people coming and praying over them with an agenda mm -hmm. of looking at their circumstances and the poverty they're in yeah. versus the work and their whole missing that whole point. What you know, what made you sort of, if you will, highlight that piece of that wound that people get from the church or make it, I mean, and don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not what the film is focused no, on, saying, yeah. but how, yeah. I mean, what, what, why? Well, I, if we're not being real, what's the point? That's it. Right. Yeah. It's like, I, I, you know, I, I know that and I'll admit, I mean, there is a twinge in me. I'm like, do I want to show the world my daughter yeah. in this state? Like, yeah, man, you know, I'm I'm not a minister, but like, you know, how is that going to reflect on me as? A but you're held to, but you're also <laughs> held to this because of your profile. Because yeah. you're ever, I mean, so many people know you. Yeah, I mean, so many, many, many millions of people know you. That 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 your the awareness of you is so much higher, so people kind of hold you to that standard. Right. And how could sense. how could this guy's daughter like you know what exactly yeah. and and to, and you know and 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 knowing both of you as parents and how that both of yours journey and you guys have gone through hurts and pains you know and that but to be just so vulnerable, especially with your daughter. But it is reflecting it. It it is showing me. When I when I kept seeing it when I when I saw it the the two times I've seen it, it kept coming back to me the importance of that for both those who have been wounded and also somebody says in there, you know that we don't give them. I think it's Will Hart who says, "Look, we don't give them a heads up that there's a hailstorm that follows this mm -hmm. because Satan's going to kind of try to come and steal the seed, right? And a lot of that hailstorm is going to come through religious people in the church yep. or people with a political or personal agenda yeah. that they're going to hurt people with. And I really appreciated the fact, because, I mean, obviously we work with churches all the time. Yeah. You're speaking in in ver so many different conferences or places yeah. and churches, you know, and that we see that part and we get, it hurts us too. Right. You know, because if there's, one of the things that I just love about you from the beginning is that and a, and a thing that we've talked about here on Radical Radio quite a bit was what has been you know the irritation of the celebrity Christian culture. Yeah, I mean it is yeah an annoyance of mine to yeah. the, even people that try to hold me into that standard. And I'm sitting here going, I'm not doing. I don't care. I don't right. care. So so what of how many likes and how many right. whatevers? Really? Yeah. You know, but but you really without sort of hitting it head on, you were hitting it. Yeah. Well, for me, it's like, as a, I'm an artist first and foremost. And so if, it, uh, you know, if you're going to be a true, true artist, like you have to be willing to like go to places that, that are uncomfortable. Right. Mm. And for me, um, it's just, I, my ego isn't, isn't wrapped up in this thing. Yeah. Like this is, this is what I do. It's not who I am. Right. right. Um, and uh, it, I just don't care. I don't, I don't care anymore about like, if you like me or if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, if what, what, what you, that that's what made the decision with serenity so much easier. It's just like, I'm like, if there's a twinge, but at the same time, it's like, well, what do I care? Like, look at what she, look at the transformation that happened to her. And so, yeah, for me, I just, I, I don't, I don't mind making people uncomfortable and I don't mind necessarily making myself uncomfortable. Clearly, with, with some to of this put stuff. that out there to show <laughs> what you were showing, I was like, "Wow!" Yeah. And the, another thing too is, it, first, I, I just I gotta say, I, I I love how the movie is really finishing. You know, with I mean, David Wagner, I love to death. Yeah. I mean, just such a humble guy, such an amazing guy, yeah. and and just a and and you know, you he, you give him the title of evangelist, which some people don't realize he really is. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody, I think, would peg him more in the prophet sort of category because yeah. he's very clear prophet, you yeah. know, in every experience I've had, he's prophesied over me multiple times. And, but just the humility and mm -hmm. the, the gentleness of him and, and he was, he was even physically in some challenges in yeah. there, but, but not, you know, just, just being there nonetheless. Yeah. And showing up because this is clearly a God thing and clearly a thing that the Lord's on. Yeah. But it, it, it just, the, the whole way, and there was even stuff when I was watching it that I caught 
that you didn't catch in it. it can, I, can I hit one of those yeah, real yeah. quick? I, I'm asking on my podcast if I can say something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but how that he, he uh, the, we, Jake Hamilton says to this mother and daughter, and I won't give away the scene of what happens, yeah. but just to say this part, he says, you're going to find Jesus in the dirt. Mm. And I remember we later that day or the next day, I don't remember, uh, we meet them and, and, uh, and so, and her life, she profoundly meets Jesus. Yeah. And it was at a place called the dirty skillet, the I dirty skillet. I didn't, I didn't catch that. That's good. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, That's really good. And so I'm sitting there going, she meets Jesus at the dirty skillet. And he goes, you're going to meet him in the dirt. And yeah. I was like, this is That's crazy. Cool. Like, I didn't notice that. It was, it was, it, I didn't catch it when it was happening yeah. and I was there for it. <laughs> but it, but then after the fact, it was just, it was amazing. But have you felt that sense of God weaving? I mean, it just seems to be a theme throughout your movies. Has that yeah. been, has that felt a consistent yeah, thing? Yeah, I think, and I think what you're picking up on is, is, is how personal these films are. I mm, mean, ultimately, yeah. like, I don't set out to make a movie for other people. Right, because if you do that, you're gonna get you're you're gonna get in trouble because you're gonna make decisions for other people. Got you, and you not that's when you start to move into like up to manipulating the audience and maybe saying things that aren't necessarily exactly true. Right, you know, we've got a couple of friends who've done done things like that in some of their stuff. So, yep. and uh, it just that drives me crazy. I, yeah, I just want to be. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. If you're gonna watch my movie, what you're seeing is the honest truth. Yeah. And so, but for me, it's, it, you get that because I'm making them for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I make father of lights because I know I was terrified of the father and I knew that was wrong. So I wanted to find out who he actually was. Mm. Holy ghost and Holy ghost reborn. Same thing. I was terrified of the Holy spirit because he was so uncontrollable. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, I, I, it freaked me out. Yeah. Like, what's he going to make me do? And I, and, but then it's like, I, I'm going to hand you this entire film. You tell me, mm. you tell me what to do. Because it's like I got the only way I can deal with this is just to jump into the deep end. Um, f- finger of God, I'm like my aunt and uncle have something happen to yeah. them. I'm like, is God still actually? Are these stories true? Right, and so I go on a journey to find out. Uh, Furious love was all about. I I had grown up in the church, and I just I the term God loves you had stopped meaning anything to me a long time ago. And you had had a prophetic word while filming Finger yes, of Heidi God Baker. about. Yeah, she's the one. Who, yeah, she yeah. she actually prophesied the movie, and I'm like, I haven't finished this one yet. I don't even, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you had no I'm idea there sequel. could possibly even be no, a second one, right? No, no, I mean, no, 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 no. Yeah. No. So, um, but yeah. So then I wanted to, I wanted to kind of see again what does God's love look like, right? Yeah. And because yeah. I want to feel it again, right? And so that these movies are all just very, very, very personal, and the God Man is the only one that I approach because I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of Jesus. I didn't have too many questions about Jesus. Yeah. Um, but I I had spent 15 years getting to know him. And all I wanted to do now is show the world what I've discovered. Yeah. Come on. Right? And so but then the how, it's 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 we have to go on another journey. You know, right, I right. always tell people, you know, my, my family makes fun of me because I'm I'm such a hobbit. Like I'm very introverted. Mm-hmm. And um I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I only like hanging out with my friends. Right. Um, people freak me out. And, uh, but I, I just, I'd be very content just living in my little hobbit hole, you know, but then every once in a while, Gandalf shows up, knocks on my door. <laughs> hey, are you ready for another adventure? You know? That's and so it's good. like, I gotta go. And so he just takes the lead and we go and we do it. Um, yeah. And so it's, uh, it's, it, it very much is. It's it's all of these films are built around my personal journey, yeah, you know. Yeah, and so that, I think that's what you're what you're picking up on. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a wild ride, that's for sure. And you've been very vulnerable in that journey, and I, man, I just appreciate it. It's it's just, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm I just so grateful that 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 you've made them. I've known so many people who've come to Christ. Of course, I'm in meetings all the time where people are like, I came to the Lord by watching yeah. Darren Wilson's films, by, you know, Wonderlust Production films and, you know, and those those movies that he made and, and how the impact is made on them. And then people who've gotten into it. And, of course, in a time and a space where mm-hmm. we're seeing our culture, you know, it's, you know, the, the enemy clearly is trying to hijack all forms of media yep. and control it and dominate it and come out with all messages to have this 
just being, hey, let's focus on the one everybody's steering away from. Mm -hmm. Everybody's afraid to acknowledge. Let's just make it about him. Yeah. Let's make it about Jesus, the God man. Yeah. You know, it's just incredible. And again, coming out June 6th, I cannot tell you enough. Get the word out, get friends, buy tickets for them, get them there. They're going to have an encounter with Jesus. And it's uh it's it's just amazing. You know, my my assistant, he when he went to see Jesus Revolution, he got up at the end and said, if anybody wants to come and encounter that Jesus, <laughs> that's right here. Jacob, he's actually at the control booth right now. <laughs> but he's like, come up here right now. And he had people come up that he that's prayed awesome. with, led to Christ, prayed for touched and impacted. This movie is going to be even more that. And so I want to encourage everybody watching this who goes and everybody should go to be ready. And maybe God's going to prompt you. And, and if he doesn't just say, Robbie prompted me, <laughs> get up at the end. And just when I saw passion of the Christ and Schindler's list, I got up and I gave an altar call, Yeah, you know, and, and, and do that. And, and you're going to be shocked at how many people, because so many people are encountering Jesus in this film. Yeah. And one know. of the things that I, that I'm really encouraging people to do is, um, is to, when you, if you're going to go be, get tickets, like buy extra tickets, not just, yes. for your, not just for your friends, but I, I'm saying buy like four or five extra ones, print them out and just carry them with you wherever you go. Come on. And just that's pray so like, God, who do you want me, who do you want me to give these to? And he'll yeah. prompt you. Cause I don't want this thing to just be a filled theaters filled with a bunch of Christians. Right. I want, no, I want Christians and non-Christians. Yes. You know, I want the full encounter because this this movie I had to the, the hard, this was one of the harder ones to edit because I had this I knew I had this very fine line to walk of like making something that was going to touch Christians and not just be like oh I know all about Jesus I, you know, I wanted to like reignite a flame in 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 you show you again your first love right yeah but then at the same time how can I do that but also make it accessible to non Christians how can I make it entertaining enough to them and also like, you know, hit on all the main points of like, okay, you can trust the Bible, right? You can trust this, you can trust that. And, you know, so th that was a fine line to walk in, you know, it, it seems like, you know, I, I was able to do it um, based on what, what I'm hearing. So that's why I'm like, get, get people who don't know Jesus into this, into these theaters. So it's that's what so we're good. encouraging people to do is to force yourself to have to give tickets away. Yeah, do it. Follow that. It's supposed to be done. It's what God wants you to do. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's it's just so good. I, thank you, man, for doing this. And 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 I want to encourage, again, everybody, go to that Fathom. Fathomevents.com. Fathomevents.com. And you can just you can search for the God Man, and it'll just pop up, and you'll, you can just type in your zip code, and it'll tell you all the theaters near you better. And you can buy up the tickets right there. Yeah, do it and, and and don't miss it. You won't want to. Darren, thanks for coming on. Dude, thanks, thanks for, for having a part of this. This is awesome. June 6th, go to theaters, pack them out. And as always, stay radical. This week's podcast is brought to you by Robbie Dawkins Ministries. Do you know someone who would be impacted by today's episode? Share it with them and let us know what they think. Subscribe or follow this podcast so you don't miss our next episode. You can also leave us a review, like, comment, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until next time, stay radical.